What I realized is like, if I'm, if I'm looking at the past, when I look at photographs of the past, often I'm not interested in like what at the time seemed like the most important thing. Like we're standing in front of the Eiffel Tower or here I am in my graduation robe. It's more like, what did the cars look like? What did my clothes look like? What did my room look like? What was the wallpaper in the old living room in my parents' house? So I made an album of now. I just took pictures of like every room in my apartment, the inside of the fridge, the inside of the pantry, like what a drugstore looks like, what a gro- like a couple aisles in the grocery store, what the street looks like, what people are wearing, what the cars look like. Because I know that in the future, I'll be very interested in like what does now look like? But in, at the moment, you're like, nothing's more boring than now. It's just like now never changes. But of course, now is changing all the time. When we think about the now, those sounds, those scents, those sights, they're constant. And then you travel, you go to a completely new environment, and every one of those senses is brand new. And that's why we are drawn to travel, many of us, to explore those experiences. I mean, even here in France, the siren is a different sound. So you're catching all yes. of these other moments that – in normal life, walking around LA, I would not pick up on because I'm saturated in my senses in that experience. No, that's exactly right. And time feels more rich and slow when you're going through novel experiences, which is why travel, like if you go on a week vacation, it feels like a month has gone by. And that's why habit also speeds time because the more consistent things are and the more you're doing things habitually, time starts to speed up. So it's that's um, I wrote about that a lot in my book, Better Than Before, because I love habits, but they do speed time, and you have to be very aware of that that's a downside of habits. And at least for me, really mindfully try to seek out novel experiences so that my time feels rich. And I do think that through the five senses, we can make experiences feel more vivid and then and therefore more rich. It's like, yeah, when you're like traveling, somebody finally told, I think a lot of people do this, but I had never really thought of it as kind of a hack. It's like, go to the grocery store. If you're in a foreign country, just walk around the grocery store. Just look what's on the shelves. Like, what does their packaging look like? What, what, what do they eat? What is their milk like? What, what, and it's just now every time I go to a foreign country, I make a beeline for the grocery store because it's just so different. It's fascinating. You know, it's hard to experience a grocery store vividly um, in your hometown, but when it's new, it feels very, very fresh and very compelling. For me, I love watching locals eat and sort of the traditions that go along with a meal. So eating in LA, I'll speed through my meal, sometimes faster than my wife, and she'll tell me to slow down. But then when we're traveling, I love the sensory cues of seeing people around me, what they're eating, when they eat the bread, how they're approaching their meal. Okay, when are they taking a break? Are they coursing it? Uh, that to me is so fascinating. And it, it is one of those universals across all cultures, because obviously as humans, we have to eat. 